<laughs> Welcome. It's Danielle McKinnon, animal psychic, animal communicator, pet psychic, intuitive, whatever you're going to call it. <laughs> Nice to see you. So today we are going to be talking about how do animals talk psychically to people, which is kind of a weird question, but I know that a lot of people who are interested in animal communication have that question. Um, we are going to ignore my hair for this day because I cannot deal. Um, and it's a little hard to watch myself in the little window. So we're just going to try to ignore that. So Cassie says, hi, I say hi. And I see that people are already saying heaven. Um, if you, I have a, um, a class coming up next week, animals on the other side. So if you're interested in taking that class, you can reply heaven. And, uh, we will do my little bot took about, will come on and give you information about how to, um, get into that class. All right. Oh, I just got to not look at myself. So do you guys, um, Jane says your hair looks fine. It's giving me trouble today. Not very professional to talk about my hair on a Facebook Live, but that's what we got going on. So um, what we're going to talk about is the difference and how animals sound psychically. Because somebody asked me the other day about um, if I'm talking to a dog, does the dog sound differently from a cat? So I want to ask you guys, what do you think? So can you put in the comments what you think um, a di different animals sound like? And I know we have people here who've studied with me. I also know we have people here from Be Open. Hey guys, if you're in Be Open, by the way, do not write heaven because you do not need to join the class. You already get the class free as part of Be Open. So don't write heaven. Um, Cassie, you look great. Think, hey, if I'm having a bad day, I'm just going to talk about myself and my hair and you guys will all compliment me. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Angie says some, oh, here, I'll put it up. I don't need to read it this way. I'll put it up. What? They changed the way that works. Okay. So Angie says, sometimes I receive a different voice or different tone, accent, or tempo with different animal energies, much like humans. So I'm going to say that I think um, Angie is talking about when she connects intuitively with an animal. This is her experience. Cool. And let's see. Uh, Jane says, I'm thinking they sound different. Cool. And Francois Francois says, you know, I think it can be like if you hear your own voice. <laughs> Robin says, I'm curious. <laughs> cool, you guys. Keep your, your different answers coming. It's actually cool to um, hear from you and hear what you think the difference may be. And I have my own answer. Um, also, I like that Francois is here. I don't know. I'm getting a lot of people on my Be Lives and showing up in Facebook from uh, that speak French. And unfortunately, I don't speak any French. Well, I do, but you don't want to hear that kind of French because I'm not so good at it. Robin says, I've given animals, I've given my animals their own voices. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love that one. Um, and Jennifer says, hello. I say, hello, Jennifer. How are you? So let's talk for a second about this. When I connect intuitively with an animal, when I was first starting out in this work, um, all I, I was very worried because the biggest distinction I had or I worried about was not, does a pig sound different from a horse, sound different from a dog, etc. It was, do any of these animals sound different from me? <laughs> I wanted the animals to come through intuitively sounding like, like I wanted a pig to sound like a pig would sound, or I think a pig would sound, so that I could be sure that I'm not intuitively connecting with my own head and just pulling information out of my head. Um, Anna Marie Ellison says, different animals have personalities, so we may perceive it differently depending on how we receive the information. And Felicia says, I've heard they show more pictures and exaggerate things to get their point across. That's true. That's definitely true. They, they, they can definitely exaggerate uh, information to make sure that we really get it. Now, Alexandra, Alexandra, you're be open, so don't type Heather, uh, heaven. Alexandra says, I have a very hard time telling the difference between my voice and that of animals. I sometimes hearing, 
think hearing my own thoughts loudly before I even think them consciously. Yeah. So my fear when I started doing this work was how will I know that it's me or the animal? As I got better at doing the intuitive work, I started not worrying about that so much. Um, and I was able to start to catch nuances in the animals information in the animals voices as they were coming in. Uh, Diane says, it would be neat to hear a voice. My dog looks at me and a thought just pops into my head like, oh, I think she's hungry. <laughs> yeah. And that can be intuitive or that can be logic as well. These two things are hard to tell apart. So to stick with this idea of how do animals talk psychically and what do animals talk psychically about? Um, for me, now that I'm comfortable knowing, trusting that this is an animal and not me, I don't really get differences in the actual sound of the voice in my head. By that, a dog, by, I mean this, a dog can say to me, um, you know, I love red balls. And a cat can say to, say to me, I love red balls. And the voice, the sound of it, I don't actually have a sound. So anybody who's on here, do you guys actually get a sound? Because some people can hear animals talk with more of their real ears versus their internal ears. I don't work that way. The way I work is they all kind of sound the same, but they have a different cadence, a different feel, a different emotion, and a different energy to them. So if anybody here actually hears on the outside, like it's like an outside sound not stuck in their head, definitely put your, um, put your comment here. And Jane says, do you hear it in your own voice? I hear it, Jane. I hear the animals in the voice that is inside my head. <laughs> so it's the same voice that I would hear. Oh, I just hurt my finger. That really hurts. What's going on here? It's that same voice. But for me, there's a different feel. For me, there's a different um energy to it. When it's me thinking it up, it comes in. I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm talking about this. I'm thinking about this. There's all this stuff around it. When it's the animal, it's just suddenly there. I hear, I like red balls or whatever. I, I like tennis balls, whatever the, whatever the thing is. So that good. Jane says, got it. <laughs> that was a good question to ask. Keep your questions coming in. But the difference is it depends on the personality of that animal what that animal wants me to know about them, how the hearing goes. So if I'm talking to a dog and this dog says, I like red balls, or, I like a red ball or whatever, whatever it is that the dog is saying. If this dog says that to me, but this dog is excitable and energetic, well, the feeling with the word would be, I like red balls, like that. So there would be excitement in it. It wouldn't necessarily be a deeper voice or a higher voice. Um, Sherry is actually, this is cool. I agree, Sherry. I hear in the same voice inside my head with different feeling or knowing. Totally agree. That's exactly what I'm saying. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. Kelly, hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Kelly says, is your animal near you when it communicates to you? So no, to hear this information psychically, the animal is nowhere near me. It can be. My dog can be near me. The cat I'm communicating with, the, the, the client I'm working with, they can be with me or they can be on the phone. It doesn't matter. The way I hear is inside my head and the hearing comes with feeling, which is kind of a, a big deal. The, sometimes though, if the animal wants to make a point in what the animal is saying, I will hear a difference in the voice. So a lot of the time, uh, I, I work with a lot of goofy animals. I don't know why I'm not goofy. I don't know what the, why I'm attracting goofy animals. So the goofy animals will do things like, I'll hear in my head, do, 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 something like that. So they're doing a deep, goofy voice. Now I know, all right, this is indicating that there's goofiness going on here. Um, Robin says, my question is, how do I explain to them that I am in pain and that they can't, for instance, sit on me right now at this moment? 
Ah, so you're looking to go the other way, not how do we hear them, but how you get a message through. And the, the simple answer to that is you say, actually, I'm going to want to clarify here. Do not say you can't sit on me right now because the animals are listening to our words, but they're also looking at the pictures in our head. If I say don't sit on me to my cat, what picture do you have in your head of what's happening with my cat? My cat is sitting on me. So all you have to do is simply say, go sit over there, <laughs> go sit on your bed, uh, go, you know, tell them the thing you want to have happen, not tell them the thing you don't want to have happen. So hopefully that helps a little Robin. The other thing to do is to not have guilt about it, not feel badly. They understand everything that you're saying. You just need to be, need to be clear in the message you're, you're giving. Um, <laughs> this you buy says you can always shave your head like me. I'm coming off of the shaved head. I've shaved my head for 25 years. My hair's been this long. So I just, it, I think it must be humid out or I don't know what's going on. Okay. So, um, Patty says I have three and they all come across different. One is my tattletale. One just finds joy in everything. And my other is moody and a loner. All rescues, all loving and all have a different voice to you. Yeah. Um, but I encourage you, Patty, to look at, as they all have different voices, to look at, is it really that they sound differently or does the sound feel different? That's the kind of crazy thing. So the other question I was going to answer today was, um, what do animals want to talk about psychically? Like what are their what are their interests now? Since there's two levels, since you connect with the animals uh, at the 3D level, I like red balls. My foot hurts, and then there's the deeper level. I'm helping my human evolve. My mission in life is this, that kind of stuff. Um, animals will talk at those two levels. At that 3D level, they're going to talk about their bum. They're going to talk about their poop. They're going to talk about it's too hot, it's too cold. It's all that survival level base stuff that's going on. Hi, Carol. <laughs> And they're happy to talk about that stuff. But here's the cool thing. They're also, because they go to this deeper level, they're also happy to talk about this other stuff. They're also happy to talk about, here's why I'm here in life. Here's what I think of the state of humanity. Here's what's going on in your town and why you need to step up and work on this and blah, blah, blah. They will talk about all of that stuff. It's not that they don't understand it. It is that they decide what's important to them and that's what they'll talk about. So when you ask what do animals want to talk about, they want to talk about whatever is important to them at this time. Um, Mar Mar Marcetta says, how many animals have passed away talk to their owners? Okay, that's a great question. And hey guys, if you are wondering about animals in the other side stuff, type heaven so that you can um, learn about my uh, class next week, which is Animals on the Other Side. It's a whole master class on that, a whole webinar. So how many animals have passed away, talked to their owners? Tons. All that has to happen is the person has to open up to being able to receive that talk, to being able to receive that message. And actually in the Animals on the Other Side class um, that you can type heaven, heaven in the comments for, I'll talk a lot about that because Everybody wants to receive a message from their animal on the other side. And it's actually the coolest thing. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to answer this question. When you want to send a message to an animal, do you say the sentences in your head or out loud? Can you share a quick method? Yeah. So to send a message to your animal, you simply think it, say it. That's it. You don't have to do a special anything. The thing is, we think we need a special method to receive the information or to give the information, but we don't. This is all happening naturally. You don't even have to intend to get the message through to your dog who's in your house or who's at your grandma's or whatever. You can just think it. Your animal is clued in and will know it. Isn't that the coolest thing? Um, Erica says, my boy just passed a couple weeks ago. And I've gotten many messages already. I know, feel he is still with me. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and heartening to hear because a lot of people whose animal has crossed over there because their grief is so great or they don't know how to open up their energy or usually both, they don't get messages for quite a while. So that's, that's quite a gift to already be getting messages. Um, we're going to say, 
I think my cat who is in heaven put a paw on my floor in white paint. Is that possible? Yep. <laughs> That's so cool. I love hearing stuff like that. That's so cool, Sonia. Absolutely. Animals can, they can make paint paw prints. They can, you know, meow loudly from behind you. I mean, there's so much stuff they can do when we're open to it. We kind of let go of the idea that this is a, um, that there are coincidences. If you can let go of coincidence, you get to get all the messages from your animal. And I'll totally talk about that more in my Animals on the Other Side class next week. Oh, you know what else with that Animals on the Other Side class? If you put heaven in there, I also have an animal in Animals on the Other Side ebook that you can get when you sign up for the class. I forgot about that. Okay, um, so that's a really cool thing that's happened, Sonia. Really cool, and I feel like you should trust it. Just trust it, that's all. All right, this was fun, guys. Thank you for playing with me, and uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, and don't forget to type heaven to get the free ebook and sign up for the class next week, and where we'll be doing a whole lot more stuff with animals on the other side. Okay, have fun talking to your animals. Bye.